Hello and welcome to Extended Play from Shiny Entertainment in Laguna Beach, California. I'm Adam Sessler. And I'm Kate Patello. Now, Shiny is renowned for bringing you such distinctly kooky titles as Earthworm Jim and MDK. And of course, the excellent and innovative Sacrifice. Now, when we talk about these games, we often refer to the term engines. But we've never really explained what that means. So here's a look at what drives some of our favorite games. <laughs> An engine is an engine, it's, it's the, the guts of the game. A game engine is something that basically can provide the entire framework. Just like a car can't run without something under the hood, a game can't run without a skeleton of computer code. This skeleton is what we call the engine. 90% of what a game engine provides you is visuals and environment. So if you don't have the best visuals, then you don't have the best engine. You take a game that has sold, been a best-selling game, and then you say, it's like, okay, this game is close to what I want to do in my game. We'll modify this into something that we want. Two successful game engines have risen above the pack in recent years. Its Quake Engines and Epic's Unreal Engine are licensed more than any other. Licensing an engine allows the developer to take the backbone of a previously successful game and apply it to their new game. You know, use it as something kind of a springboard. The stellar example, of course, is Half-Life. To a large part, Half-Life was possible because they were able to build on this, you know, this kind of uh, baseline technology. Half-Life used a modified version of the Quake 2 engine. And while the two games look nothing alike, both operate from the same technical structure. Another totally different game in development on a modified Quake 2 engine is the third-person perspective, Anachronox. We tend to like license people's engines. It's very important for designers to really, really seriously un understand the technology they're using and really know the limits of it and push those limits so you can present a wonderful world and, and, and come up with new like creative ideas on top of that technology. People aren't cognizant of how much of it is smoke and mirrors, how much of a good game design is making it look like it's much more powerful than it actually is. The engine has several components. There's the renderer, which draws everything on the screen. There's the AI, which figures out how the characters move around the world. There's collision. There's networking that figures out how you play the game online. And then there's the tool set, such as Unreal Ed, which we use a lot around the office as level designers to build the world. So how do these components set the Quake and Unreal engines apart from each other? The differences are very technical, but result in unique design tools. The Quake 3 engine boasts what results in the best-looking polygonal architecture, especially in its ability to render curved surfaces. This technology is most evident in games like Heavy Metal Fact 2 and Alice. The more commonly licensed engine is the Unreal Engine. It's been used in games like Rune and Deep Space Nine The Fallen. One of the engine's chief strengths is its ease of use. You can quickly um, put together your levels. Um, the level editor is very good, uh, so you don't have to wait around to see what the game is going to look like. Even though the original games of both engines are first-person shooters, obviously engines can be used for a variety of genres. If you want to build a third-person game, a driving game, uh, you can usually tailor an engine into what you want to do with it. Engines are being licensed more and more frequently as developers look to save valuable time and resources. While licensing engines has mainly been a route for PC game developers, it looks like that's about to change. I think you'll find companies licensing game engines more and more, especially with all the new technology like Xbox, Nvidia, NV20. We already have several licensees using the engine on Xbox and PlayStation 2. It's pretty clear that the potential of both the Quake and Unreal engines is only limited by creativity. Activity.